From the lads of Modern for Advantage, we are heading out to Warlord Day. Woo! Let's go! Hello there, guys. I'm here with the legendary uh, Perry Twins. And just for clarification for the future, for anyone who doesn't know, this is Michael. Mangled Michael. And this is Alan. Everybody, Alan. There we go. I, mean, I got it I got it wrong in the pre-interview uh, thing. So uh, you're here today. Um, you don't work for Warlord. No. But you go, presumably, you've got a long history with people like John and Rick going back. Oh, yeah, yeah. A, a lot of years. Um, so what is it, you, first of all, what is it you, you're doing here today, then? This is the <clears throat> Battle of Sp East Stoke, or... Uh, Stoke Field uh, fought in 1487, two years yeah. after the Some Battle of Bosworth. Some people say the last Battle of the Wars of the Roses. Yeah. Was really, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, yeah. I think there's a few uprisings after that, but there were nothing on this scale. So <clears> where's <throat> Percy here then? Um, he should be over there somewhere, shouldn't he? he? Should be over there. I, I remember from my history that that Henry made sure Percy did fight this time. Yeah, because he was a bit iffy at Bosworth. Yeah. He's like, no, 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 you're going to prove your loyalty. You're going in the front. I think he came, came up late, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was still yeah, trying yeah. to get out of it. Yeah. <laughs> See how this plays out. Yeah, exactly. Very much that kind of guy. Absolutely. And, and this force is entirely made with your own collection. Well, with your own collection, but is this from the current Perry Miniatures range? Yeah. I, I made the Water of the Roses range. And uh -huh. uh, yeah, all these were not painted by me. <laughs> I think I've, there might be one or two units in here painted by me, but most of we... And a few by me. Oh, by and you, 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 you've painted <laughs> some as well, yeah. 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 But, I mean, yeah. I can see I'm on the right side of the board here. Yes, this is, this, this is... You're a Yorkist. Yorkshireman. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're always... Uh, when we did reenactment, we did Yorkist uh, household. Because, so, and you make a beautiful Richard III model because you know who real warrior oh, yeah. kings are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> coming, yeah. Out, coming out of the car, car park. Did you see, did you see <laughs> yeah, that yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, right, and so I've heard Rick Priestley talk before about some of, the, some of the things around Black Powder and Hail Caesar and why they're fast play, and he refers to you guys and your vast collection, your propensity to play on massive boards. And is that is that fast play what kind of drives the yeah, speed yeah. of playing points? Yeah, I mean, we uh, mostly use uh, my uh, same size table, just six by four, uh, six by twelve, for play testing Black Powder. Right, when Jervis and Rick. So sort of writing that, and uh, yeah, we want to do yeah fast play and time in the evening to go down the pub afterwards. Right, so that was the yeah. idea behind. Yeah, it. but you want you but want, you, a but you want to figures. Not necessarily. I, mean, we, I think we, we just we, had a lot of figures. We just had a lot of figures. So it, all the games ended up being yeah you know, large amount of figures over a big yeah. area, and the rule was just tailored tailored to that. We never really attempted to do a six foot by four foot table right. in small amounts, but it, there's no reason why you couldn't do that. No, no. But um. We want. I suppose we we're pushing the rules at the time. Yeah, and, so, and, you, and you can play on a table of this size, six by twelve, is it? Yeah. In an evening, and still go for a oh, game. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. With, Not for a meal, necessarily, but maybe a pint at the last. Right. At the last call. Yeah, last part. orders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Obviously, you drink during the game as well, just for, to be sociable. It's agreeable among friends. Yeah, it is. Oh yeah. yeah, it yeah. Is, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, the miniatures. Then these these in your Wars of the Roses plastics, people have better. They love them. Uh, I don't know. Is that your best performing box? Wars uh, Roses, I think. It's um, quite high up, isn't it? Yeah, the effects of um, Napoleon's probably more. But, but there's as an more individual boxes. box. Well, there's what, how many boxes of Wars uh, I five, think it's five. There's Four. heavy cavalry, light cavalry, mercenaries, and Foot bog standard infantry. Foot and footnights. Foot yeah, five. Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't know which is the best seller, but I imagine the heavy cavalry and the footnights probably. Yeah. Probably quite high because a lot of people using for non non non. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's that stuff. kind of high yeah. gothic period. Isn't yeah, yeah. It? The, the armor is like TV armor. Yep. Yeah. You know, it, it looks good. Yeah. It looks the yeah. part. Yeah. Um, and, and it can be used for uh, uh, Lord of the Rings and that kind of thing. So fantasy, fantasy stuff. Fantasy. Yeah. yeah, high fantasy. Absolutely. And um, so, what? Going back in a day, you used to work for Games Workshop. Yes. Um, and I was talking to to Johnny B, my co-host. Uh, about, I said, you know, I don't think I've got any Perry miniatures in my collection. Well, it's like, well, you must have because you've got some old games workshop, <laughs> but you just won't have their names on it. So, yeah, back, true, going yeah. way back when, you know, I'm a boy, I had his childhood in the 80s. What stuff did you guys call for games workshop? Well, pretty much we did every range. Yeah, I think from 1979 yes, when we right. started. I mean, we, yeah, we, we yeah, started in 79, but I think we had a hand in most ranges. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but I'm quite proud to say I never made a space one. 
You never made a space marine. No, I never, never wanted to. Either. I made two, but metal ones. Yeah, yeah. This is before plastic, I think. Oh, right. I th yeah, I think it was before mm. plastic, uh, early eighties, anyway. Right. But, yeah. So they won't look exactly like people come to expect space marines to look. No, actually, I did. I, did, I seem to remember I did two standing upright, kind of as almost like guards. And you, what you can't do with space marine armor is actually close the legs or no, the arms or use a gun no. or use a gun. No, so. those, those guys have hit. Wow. Exactly. Yeah. Eyes sticking out the side of their yeah. head to look through the hamlet. Yeah, yeah, I found it interesting. So, so you, th there's no particular range that like will really. What would, how would somebody identify one of your miniatures and say, uh, "Here, uh, I can you make this." Uh, well, the uh, middle period Bretonian, I suppose we did all right. them. Uh, before, so do you mean workshop wise? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and the Lord of the Rings stuff. Yeah, yeah, all the Lord of the Rings oh, stuff. Right. So that which was a slightly smaller scale. Slightly smaller. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And more. more Accurate in scale, in scale yeah, yeah, um, <clears throat> proportions, as well. yeah, we, yeah, yeah, which yeah. had to be done because of the company. Uh, so those the the yeah. fellowship of the ring figures, then uh, your, your mainly. Yeah. I mean, the, w there's the also the Brian well, Nelson. Nelson made the first fellowship. The ring yeah, ring, uh, and and then we, I think we probably end up doing probably about seventy percent of or eighty percent of the um, Lord of the Rings figures from then. From that range, yeah, and then on to into the Hobbit. Um, oh, nice. Movies and well. then a few more people got involved yeah. in the Hobbit. Yeah, game. that's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Right. In the Hobbit. yeah. So that's if people want to do your signature game workshop, you'd say it's that. Yeah, yeah I, I think probably good. more proud of that than. Um, mm. um, I mean, they're earlier. lovely models. They're really elegant. So moving on then. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're still very active. You've got your plastic ranges, um, which I think a lot of people are familiar with. Stockists all over the country. You see, mm. you see those. But I've got boxes of them myself. Um, but the metal ranges is, is direct order. That yes. Is, is, is that yeah, right? Yeah. 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 So people may be less familiar with that, but they're quite, but they're quite they're quite exhausting. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You can do a quicker turnaround, obviously a quicker turnaround with a metal. Right? You can go into more uh, niche periods, yeah. more niche yeah. for us to produce in the first place. Yeah. Yeah, plastics always take a six months. The lead uh, time on the yeah, just at least. Whereas you can knock yeah. up a mortar crew in a, in a week or so and, and have it cast. cast up in two weeks' time. Yeah, you might you could have it on the shelf if yeah, right. wasn't have, didn't have his feet up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't do your own casting. You no, we no. outsource to uh, an old friend of ours. I think going back yeah, 30, yeah. 40 years. Maybe. I mean, I'm almost interested in. I was in, I mean, see quite how closely connected all this stuff. Mm. Is. Like most miniature, much bigger miniature companies are somewhere. Around here, we're here at Warlord, but it's like around the corner. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And everybody worked there, and yeah. you know everybody knows each other. Yeah, well, it's, oh, it's yeah. because um, yeah, when people leave Games Workshop, they're still very keen on the the industry. Yeah, and they set up their own little their side own little, yeah, some little satellite little, company helping out. So yeah, doing and then they know somebody from the other company. Oh, can you have you got yeah, a spare yeah. cast that we can use for them? Right, or something. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's all incestuous in that way. So, the, the, so people looking forwards, then what? What might you have? Um, I'm, I might be wrong. Did it, Did you recently release some Austrian cavalry? Is that, that one was, of your more recent plastic? No, the most recent were Prussian Russian cavalry. Russian uh, cavalry Prussian and stroke Russian. You can and nobody else does plastic Russian cavalry. Uh, Prussian Russian. Um, no, I think no, I think probably first. Yeah, the Victrix um, or not Victrix? Victrix uh, no. no. might. They, they no. pick random bits. Don't yeah, they? yeah, no, they haven't done Prussian. Oh, okay. No, no, the. With Russian and Russian, uh, because it's, they're dudes, or, or juicing, they use the same plume furniture and right. almost the same uniform apart from the head, headdress. And right, swords. is it like a different plume or something? A uh, different, it's a helmet rather than a shako. Uh, right, okay. Of, um, so in one box you can produce about, I think it's about 25, 30 regiments. Right. So the more regiments you can build out of the box. The, so more, the heads are separate, so you, you can just Yeah, everything, yeah. So, yeah, there's quite a lot of separate parts, so you can. And just if, when you identify something like is suitable for plastic, right, it's going to work well. Yeah, yeah, you know? that's right. Yeah, you've yeah. got to pick the right sort of box to do with plastics. We'd never really pick a niche unit like uh, I don't know, something like uh, rifle, British rifles, Empress probably, or something like that. Yeah, because you could only have one unit. There's one, one red, unit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mamelukes. Yeah, yeah Mamelukes, exactly. It, yeah, but you mostly could, Frenchmen in exotic uniforms. Yeah, it's yeah. like you could use them for uh, against the French in Egypt. Because yeah, on mass, but yeah. Like, yeah. If anybody ever wanted to bit, yeah. build an Egyptian army, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. So, what might people be seeing coming out of Paris Studio in the next uh, in, the, in the next <clears> months? Uh, I'm working on Franco-Prussian War at the moment, and I've just literally just finished last week the 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 command for the French 
plastic infantry. Uh, right. The rest of the, the rest of the box has already been not going off to be tooled at the moment, uh, which is a several months. And that's going to come out in your classic boxes. Yeah. And the, the, like 30, 40 figures for twenty five pounds. Yeah. That kind of yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. On plastic sprue. Yep. A lot of interchangeability. Yeah. I have been somewhat confused by the by the past two years' interest in Frank Operation War. I'm yeah, so have I. I. I don't get it. <laughs> was it War Games Atlantic? There's a few companies that's a metal one. I was like, this is a war that lasted a few weeks that nobody yep. really cares about. And suddenly, oh. there's a lot of interest in it. Yeah, French do. <laughs> well, they don't. They do care about it. Really. No, they don't, they don't <laughs> forget about the it, don't they? <laughs> the Russians are quite happy, proud, proud of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I have any idea what that... I mean, what did you want to do? Um, well, it's... it's we, we met... As we made a range, the first thing we made for um, Foundry was uh, Frank Prussian War range in metal. Right. That was, so back in 1984. Four, yeah, something like that. So I thought I'd like to do it again, but properly this time, and, and yeah. do it in plastic. Mm. And so I, I th yeah, I just went ahead and did it. I didn't really think too much about it, really. No, it just seems <laughs> since so many people are yeah. kind of doing Frank Prussian I mean, at the moment. But, the, but, but the, the good thing about plastics with Frank Prussian is that. One box will suit all, nearly, all, nearly all the infantry <coughs> yeah. army. Two boxes for each. Yeah, army. yeah. yeah. Large, I mean, the Prussians oh. pretty wore, wore pretty much the same kind of thing, fighting the Danes in '64. Yeah, and, and the um, and the Austrians in '66. Yeah, and uh, the French. Yeah, could be used for um, a, a colonial type. Um, yeah, kind of Saharan and yeah, that kind of thing. And what sort of metals might come along to support that range? That you oh, I've already done man groups, that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, I've, I've done already done a, a a reasonable amount of Prussian stuff, cavalry and artillery already in metal, uh, and French in artillery and metal and uh, light infantry. I'm just planning next week to start on uh, French infantry in metal as well, and there's some cavalry out there as well. My um, my favourite Franco-Prussian story was um, on a trip to Berlin some years ago. I went to Spandau. I don't know if you've been oh, yeah. before, no, the been, prison's yeah. been knocked down years ago because it was a bit of a pilgrimage for not neo Nazis. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Been in there. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that's gone. But the, there's an there's a um, Vauban Star Fort, a late oh, yeah. one hmm. there. And two things about it it's very Franco Prussian, although they don't know. Military history in Germany has got a really strange place. Like we're all interested <laughs> in it, but they want to not remember it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, very much suppressing it. So one was the built there was this massive tower which was younger than the rest of it and you could tell the you know the brickwork was different built at a different time you go in there and you have to read the guidebook in detail to discover oh this was built to put the gold in that the french gave them after the franco prussian war oh, oh, right. this ma this massive it's like a grain elevator type tower oh. and it held the war booty and oh. the other thing in the gymnasium what, what was full of cannon at the very back there was a display of some world war ii stuff like a russian mortar just a few random bits that you might find in a small museum but the front of it was all this cannon from this sort of 1850s what like, the hell is all this randomly <laughs> doing here there's no no there's no notice and oh. then i realized there's a big n on all of the, <laughs> it's all captured it's all captured at sedan oh wow well, it's, still, it's there. still there oh wow well. Probably the French don't know or care, especially you know as a, yeah. as a, as a government. Mm. Like, yeah, there's a lot of bronze oh, in a room, and and it, it, it was the not only is it, is it the end for Napoleon the Third, but it's the they call miltrayers that kind of early Gatling gun mm. yeah, type yeah. weapon system. Yeah, well, that's probably quite an interesting collection. If that's I'm sure it is. Yeah. And there's just rows yeah. and rows, of <laughs> wow. but no information telling you what it is because they're just not interested in celebrating military achievements. I, mean, huh. I get. Uh, yeah, yeah. You but as, as a gamer who usually plays German, it's like this is brilliant. <laughs> okay, let me take a photo. Yeah. So uh, no, I think I think it's a great period, it, it, and quite a huge amount of battles. They're always generally large as well. Yes. And uh, no, I think it's an idle war games period. I think really. Yeah. Well, so still on on with that. Then it was one of the I'm really interested in first world, um, and 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 how really it, it, it's three different wars. Mm. In the classic, you've got you've got that almost Napoleonic style open warfare of 1914. You've got three years of siege warfare, mm. and then you've got combined arms warfare mm. of 17 to 18 yeah. that we would recognise today with the tanks, the artillery. You know, they don't always succeed in it, but they have worked out that it's mm. this it does work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's going to work. You mm. need to bring the heavy firepower in. With yeah, the movement. 
and so forth. And the Germans and the British have taken two different approaches. The British and French have got a technology approach. The Germans have got a technique approach, infiltration with the stormtroopers. Yeah. But it's the same thing. It's firepower mm. and maneuver mm. to achieve breakthrough. Yeah. And a lot of criticism, it's often criticized the First World War, sort of failing to look at the American Civil War and the Gettysburg yeah. and say, look, this is what you're going to get in future. Said, well, you forget in them two wars in between. Exactly, then, yeah. Frank, the Franco Prussian War is open battle for yours. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty yeah. much like brilliant first, uniforms, yeah. gold buttons, the yeah. lot, you know. Yeah. Pretty, pretty much like the foot, foot 1914, really, mm. in, in terms of uniforms. They were a bit and, keener on open order in 1914. Yeah, a little bit, but yeah, yeah. Still linear. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's a machine gun at an angle. Is still, yeah, yeah. You're yeah, still yeah. stood in a line. Yeah. yeah. But the, the, the British comment on, on the British coming, uh, the Germans coming in in columns still, though. Yes. And firing just kind of uh, in, I think my world battle was, I don't know, it's more, but it's just kind of loading and firing. Just, the guns were so hot that they just, the rounds were just going off anyway. Yeah. And uh, they were, yeah, the Russians, the Prussians were coming, Germans were coming in more shoulder well, to shoulder. So, as I understand it, the pre war doctrine in the British Army was to advance in open order, mm. but then the plan is to concentrate to achieve decisive firepower. And you can see yeah. the logic behind that. It. Like, we don't want to take unnecessary casualties while we get into contact. But mm. once we're in, we want the maximum number of bullets yeah. in the smallest amount of space. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. But the, but the space helps people miss a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, Michael, that's what you've been up to. But, uh, Alan, what about you? What have you got in the works? Uh, well, uh, working on uh, various things at the same time. Uh, I'm doing Frank, uh, Frank Prussian. <laughs> well, I'm actually doing Prussian, uh, well, Saxon cavalry, but they're from 1806. Right. Um, so, this is one of the Confederation of the Rhine states? Yeah. Well, the Saxon, yeah, Saxon, yeah. And, uh, I'm oh, doing... no, Saxon is not part of it, is it? Or is it? it well, it, it's a large state, really. It's mm. sort of, sometimes it classes into the. Uh, 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 Federation Rhine, but yeah, it's a state by itself. Uh, so I'm doing quite a bit of that. I'm doing more, uh, artillery for it, um, right. and uh, also working on the next. Well, just sent off uh, the R R Russian Ulan for plastic. Which right. So this is the second Russian cavalry. Yeah, these release. come out after the French infantry uh, in plastic. Right. But it'll be behind them. Right. Uh, so Erlans have got a, got an interesting. Is it a Hungarian word or something? They're so. used in Russia. And Prussia and Austria. Yeah, Hazaris. I don't know where Yudan is. But they do appear in those armies, which makes no, you think Prussia, it, comes, yeah. it comes from that part yeah. of the world. Yeah, it? it is. Because yeah. other people have lancers. Yeah. But they distinctly and right, yeah. they have um, a different headgear. Yeah, yeah Shapska, um, which is yeah, which like, like the Polish. Polish, like, well, that's all derived from the Polish uh, dress, anyway. Right. I think they all copied the Polish sort of design. Yeah. Um, but the, yeah, but the uniform is, uh, sorry, the, the horses are exactly the same as the Prussian, Russian carry I did before, the Dragoons. Oh, you've got a separate so, horse sprue? Yeah, so that, that can go in the Yunnan box. So right. it cuts down costs if you use the same horse, mm. because it's exactly the same. Which which makes it feasible for you, yes. it, it you know. Makes it, a lot easier, or a lot yeah. easier, just as cheaper to do. Right, right. Um, and what would, what's going to stand out of these, these, are they, you said Prussians, but are they usable within the, Russian Ru Austrian forces? No, sorry, they're Russian. Russian they're Ulam. Russian Ulam. Russian Ulam, yeah. yeah. I know it's all Russian, Prussian, yeah, but it's, yeah, the Russian Ulams, yeah. Russian Ulams, right. Um, yeah, because they got, I seem to remember, they've got quite a few of them, they're line cavalry regiments. Um, yeah. Um, and in terms of Napoleon, I mean, people love their Napoleonic size, being, it's, they it's, yeah. when, and I always say, when you ask, when you think about wargaming, if, if TV has to represent wargaming, it is rows <laughs> of Napoleonic miniatures. Yes. Or if it's a big American show, it might be the Civil War. Yeah. Over, yeah. over the, the, the American Civil War. But the kind of, and I certainly the, 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 the aesthetic of war games clubs with back when everybody gloss varnished everything is it shining ranks of Napoleonic <laughs> figures. Yeah. Some you know, people do just still do that. Still do that. that that's the look that <laughs> they want you know, that. in lime green basing and, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and all that. And it still looked fantastic, you know. Yes. Oh, so yeah. um, I, I see the ongoing appeal. So do you, were you, are you expecting to continue with your Napoleonic plastic range? Is it doing oh, well yeah. for you? It, it's just very well, yeah. I mean, I've, I, don't, I can't remember how many. You know, boxes have got out now, but it's um, quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, off the top of my head, I can't remember. You can never really finish a range anyway. No. People ask, are you going to finish this, do this to this range? At some point, 
but you can never finish a range because there's always something you've missed or, mm. or, or saving to later. And the product range is like a, it's a, well, it's a world war, so there's always new armies to, to do. Even the one, yeah, so. yeah. Oh, I, well, in truth, it's several wars, right? There's something like seven well, yeah, yeah. coalitions. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you don't need, do you go, do you go back? Do you got, you got tricorn units? We haven't done much in yeah. 18th century, uh, uh, apart from America. Like, America well, when like, siege is too long, 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 I'm thinking you're going back to like, you know, late 1700s. Oh, well, That's Napoleonics, but they probably are still in yeah. sort of Frederick the Great era uniform. And well, the Prussians early on. The, the Prussian 1806 and the uh, yeah, Saxon 1806 are in bicorns. Are they? Were, yeah, not tricorns, bicorns by this period. But, um, so they quite look quite 18th century. Yeah. Um, which is what they, and they fought <laughs> in an 18th century way. Well, we haven't done any Seven Years' War or, or Malburian. No, we've done, we've done Malburian Wars ranges in the past, mm -hmm. not for Perimenters. But I don't, I do, I quite well, a lot. Like Foundry or somebody like that. You work uh, for yeah, a lot of people. Oh, yeah, for Foundry. Yeah, 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 sorry, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. it's quite a big American War of Independence range of sort of do with a couple yeah. of... Yeah. Because that, that's another one that sort of muskets and tomahawks. Is the, there's an interest in that, isn't yes. there? You yeah, know? I mean, there's yeah. always. An, I think there's always been an interest in it because the battles were mostly fairly small yes. and doable. On a, oh, you can buy the whole army. It's yeah. like the appeal of the Confederation of the Rhine troops. Like, mm. I can have the army of yeah. Bavaria in my draw. <laughs> yeah. right? All of it, every regiment, yeah. every collar yeah. and yeah. cuff correct on every figure, because there yeah. aren't that many regiments, right? Yeah, there. and some of the smaller duchies. I mean, you could have that in yeah. ten figures. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they well, provided a, li really a light company <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and a squadron of cavalry or yeah, whatever. Like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and do you, f do you find much of that happens? That you, do you know with your customers that a lot of kit bashing goes on, I know, for mm. Napoleonics. Mm. They say, oh, well, they're a bit like the Bavarians, but the helmet is different and they're taking a hacksaw out to a metal figure to do a head swap. Yeah. 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 It's much oh, yeah. to do with plastic. So yes. Similar. I mean, yeah. I think that's, that's one of the big appeals of Napoleonic yeah, yeah. plastics is I can make those swaps. Yeah. You know, at, often the difference between, for example, horse and foot artillery, it's really the headgear, right? Uh, They're not completely no, different, but at any really. kind of distance, <laughs> a head swap is not a bad starting point. Yeah, you can start with yeah. the then you've got to change all the lower half. <laughs> all right, okay. <laughs> As sculptors, you completely disagree with everything I just said there, which is, which is always good. Wait, 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 if yeah, some people do get away with it, doing yeah. that, but uh, yeah, we can't. <laughs> no, 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 I'm talking about for kit bashers and oh, yeah. so forth, oh, yeah, yeah. at home. Yeah. 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 I'm not suggesting oh, yeah. all you do is do a head swap. Yeah. I'm saying for people at home with a plastic yeah. head swap, yeah. could, e could easily make a, oh, could yeah. make a major difference yeah. to a yeah. uniform, especially for the smaller nation units. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, look, I, I could talk to you all day, but you've got things to do, and we're going to have a look around. Uh, so it's been lovely oh, to meet you. Yeah. We did both at once. Look at that. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy our content. Like the video. Maybe leave us a comment. Thank you.